Many women deal with nausea, also known as morning sickness during pregnancy. Now researchers think they know why that is. Here to talk about this is Dr. Shariar Kavusi, a reproductive endocrinologist with St. David's South Austin Medical Center. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Rebecca. So there's this new study. Researchers say women who are exposed to higher levels of a hormone called GDF-15 before they become pregnant are less likely to deal with nausea when they do become pregnant. What role does this hormone play in terms of nausea or lack thereof during pregnancy? So GDF-15 is an acronym for growth differentiation factor 15. That's a hormone that affects the brainstem. And most women are going to have very low levels of GDF-15 in the non-pregnant state. Now, the, oh, I'm sorry, go I'm ahead. Sorry. So the fetus actually will produce the fetus and the placenta produce this hormone during pregnancy. And this woman whose body is not used to high levels of this GDF-15 will be exposed to it during the pregnancy. And that's the association with nausea and vomiting then that increases with increased concentration of GDF-15 in the maternal bloodstream during pregnancy. So a lot of women deal with at least some form of this. A less common but more severe form of nausea during pregnancy is hyper... Why don't you say it? Because I... Hyperemesis <laughs> gravidarum. Hyperemesis gravidarum. Okay, so is the level of GDF-15 exposure related to this as well? Yes, Rebecca, it is. So um, in cases of hyperemesis gravidarum, which happens in about 2% of pregnancies or so, as opposed to nausea and vomiting, which happens in about 70%, mostly in a mild form, hyperemesis is very severe. And it is with elevated GDF-15, and the study showed that as well. The study out of USC and Cambridge showed this. Um, and also to address what you asked earlier about um, high levels of GDF-15 before pregnancy and not having nausea and vomiting, there's an example of this. There's some people that have beta thalassemia, which is a, which is a blood disorder, it's genetically um, inherited, and some women have this thalassemia, and they have high GDF-15 levels in the non-pregnant state, so their body's used to that, and when they're pregnant, they don't have nausea and vomiting. It's very interesting, actually. That is very interesting. You know, in addition to being an unpleasant feeling, warning sickness, uh, what are some of the, the medical concerns about nausea in pregnant women, especially the severe form? Right, so... Most women who have nausea, vomiting, or pregnancy are going to have a mild form where it's definitely unpleasant, as you mentioned, and you know it's a quality of life issue temporarily, and try to mitigate it with treatments. But there's a severe form, which, as you're saying, I mean, it can have some effects. Um, a woman may not be able to drink fluids and may not be able to eat food effectively, and may not be able to hold down drinks and, and food. And then they have weight loss, and they can have electrolyte imbalances and have low potassium, which needs to be replaced. Um, they may be hospitalized, and there can be um, effects like that. The fetus actually can, there's some conflicting data in the literature saying there may be um, low birth weight. Some data says no, but that is a potential uh, complication as well. How is nausea during pregnancy treated now, whether it's minor or severe? So I think the first line for our pregnant patients that are in the first trimester who have nausea, vomiting of pregnancy, um, they're taking vitamin B6 and they can take that alone um, or they can take it with a combination of Unisom as well and that helps. Um, it's very effective for most patients and in some patients it's not very effective. Um, there are other pharmacologic medications as well. Um, so women can take uh, Phenergan, which makes them very tired, so there's a bad side effect of being tired with that medicine. Um, there's also Zofran, which some, some weak data suggests may be an increased risk, small increased risk of cleft palate in the fetus, a cleft palate or cardiac defects, so some people are shying away from it. Um, there's not enough convincing data for sure that it'll cause those problems, but um, those are some um, modalities. There's also the idea of taking prenatal vitamins a month before being pregnant or sooner, because there is some data suggesting that there's going to be a lower nausea vomiting incidence and severity if you take prenatal vitamins a month before getting pregnant because of the vitamin B6 that's in the prenatal vitamin. So looking at GDF-15, how might the new research on this help pregnant women in the future in terms of treatment or prevention? Yes, so for prevention, um, it's interesting because the same group that published a study recently in Nature, they're going to be looking at metformin, which is a medication that 
people take for diabetes or polycystic ovary syndrome because it does actually increase GDF-15 levels in non-pregnant people, in non-pregnant women. So that medication, if studies show it to be safe in certain doses to increase those levels for desensitization um, and actually desensitize the, the female patient before she's pregnant, that could potentially help. That's not proven yet. It's not something that's done as a standard of care yet. It's going to be studied. Um, there's also the idea of giving GDF like during the pregnancy potentially, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, pre-pregnancy to help with the sensitization. Um, but GDF given pre-pregnancy, um, there's a phase one clinical trial that shows safety, um, but we just need more data on that. We need to see efficacy and safety in phase two and phase three trials before that's used. Um, and there's the idea of blocking GDF during the pregnancy, actually, maybe blocking GDF uh, 15 with some kind of medication, which is during pregnancy, and we all get a little nervous about giving medications that are new during pregnancy. So um, there's still a lot of research to be done before there's some treatment modalities for, for this. Um, this GDF-15. All right. We are out of time. Dr. Cavusi with St. David South Austin Medical Center. Thank you so much for sharing your time and your expertise with us tonight. Thank you, Rebecca. Appreciate you. Thank you.